What's up guys, Phoenix here. This is going to be the first video that I do in 2016, so for me to you, Happy New Year's Duelists. May 2016 be better than 2015 for you in every regard. But this video is also going to be a deck profile of the deck that I played at ARG Orlando this past weekend. That is one of the reasons, if not the only reason, why no videos went up between Friday and now. Um, I was out of town, just in ARG Orlando. I had planned to get a lot of videos filmed and have them scheduled to go up. But that just ended up never happening due to like my work schedule being really hectic right before I left, getting some testing in, last minute testing, making like decisions and all that. So everything ultimately just kind of came down to the wire for me, and I was like something had to get cut, and I just turned out. I just made the decision to cut video production for that weekend out. But as you can probably tell, I played the Perform Age Magician deck or Pepe Magicians. Um, I did pretty well. I started out pretty well. Um, I started out 3-0. Um, then I lost round four to an artifact scythe that I had literally no like possible prediction or read of because I didn't see any artifact cards the entire match. But then I lost to one in game three. I played nothing but mirror matches, by the way. I played uh, magician mirror matches round one through seven, the rounds that I played. But I lost round four. Then I won round five, and then I just got completely shut out round six and seven, um, where I was just like could not play. Um, I lost round six to an artifact scythe, and then I lost round seven. Um, to a mirror force that I couldn't have played around. <laughs> there was no way for me to play around the mirror force, and I had no read on it being mirror force. I just got blown out by it, and uh, he came back and won the game from there. Um, so, I mean, honestly, not the best that I could have done, but I can kind of chalk that up to my own mentality changing throughout the course of the tournament. Like, I started just losing confidence after my first loss, and that's something that's really bad about what I do, <laughs> is that I'm very quick to lose confidence. If, if I start out strong and then lose one, I'm very quick to just lose any confidence that I have um, in myself continuing to win. But that's neither here nor there. That's something that I've been working on for years, and it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be, and it's getting better, and it will continue to get better until finally it just stops happening. But anyway, the deck list is uh, pretty standard. There's some oddball uh, tech choices that I made for the weekend, and I'll explain those when I get to them. But anyway, for the uh, Magician Engine, Triple Skull Corbat Joker, Triple Wisdom Eye, Double Dragon Pulse Magician, one Oaf Dragon Magician, and one Dragon Pit Magician. Now, I decided to play this um, because in testing, it was extremely strong, being able to have, like, Oaf and Dragon Pit in your scale. It's also just another low scale, um, which allows you to search two low scales off of Pendulum Call. Um, if you need Dragon Pulse to make a play with a rank 4, you could just search this. And that's another low scale because you have to search different names. So that came up a bit. Um, but in testing, I was just always having these up. And I was always being able to like add a card back from my extra deck to my hand. Um, and it was like literally insane how much it was coming up. And it was really strong. But then over the course of the tournament, it didn't happen nearly as much. Um, I don't know if that was because of like just different plays that I was being forced to make. A different mindset in the plays I was going into or whatnot. I'm not sure if I would play it again. Because um, it was very good to be able to just be able to search you know, two low scales off of uh, one pendulum call. But overall, I think Partnaga might be a better choice in going in back end. Because, I mean, this increases your Magician count to make your Wisdom Eye plays better. But Wisdom Eye also plays well with uh, Partnaga because it can destroy itself if you have a Magician or a Performer Pal in your opposite Pendulum Zone, um, which Partnaga obviously is. So there is that to consider. Uh, for the rest of the deck, Triple Luster Pendulum, the best card. Uh, this card bullies you into making only Draco Slayer cards, but if it didn't, it would be probably the best tuner in the game. Um, at the current point in time. And it still probably is, Jesus. Uh, but for clowns, triple damage juggler, one mirror conductor, or triple plush fire, and one mirror conductor, and then triple damage juggler, and then one trick clown, one hat tricker. Um, I've thought about putting trick clown up to two, maybe increasing the count of mirror conductors. Basically, I'm back and forth on which one I want to have more of. It's either I put in an extra mirror conductor to be another low scale um, that you can get off damage juggler because that came up a little bit, or it's to get uh, to put another trick clown in here. Uh, because a lot of the times your trick line interactions are to like let trick line go to the graveyard then bring back plush fire so that you like don't die and this goes back into your extra deck after an exceeds that you use it on and all that but then at that point you've lost access to trick clown until you draw instant fusion and or make emerald to put it back so like i feel like a second trick clown could be like really worth but anyway for the um for the remainder of the monsters there's the three reptiles that i ran which is one gigabyte one masculine one xa repalamaro for the nat beast play I played one Gym Knight Garnet, and then the last two monsters were Hand Traps, two Mexis. Um, I was testing Ghost Ogre for the longest time going up and into this event, but I couldn't actually get my hands on more than one, and I didn't want to just play one Randy Ghost Ogre. So instead of playing like the Ghost Ogre, I played uh, Gigabyte because that actually lets you out and that beast play these fields in the mirror easier. And it was just like, 
It was something that like made your plays extend a lot further than Ghost Ogre would if you weren't dealing with Nat Beast Pleiades, which obviously Ghost Ogre is just the out, the preferred out to Nat Beast Pleiades. But against people that were making Nat Beast Pleiades, like you could just make Karn Gorgon um, if you have any card like Gigabyte or Hat Trigger. And so instead of just playing Ghost Ogre, I decided to play Gigabyte instead because it would literally come up in the exact same hands because it is literally just a one-for-one -one swap. Uh, but then, like, you could just combine it with any of your spellcasters and make Karn Gorgon, and then they literally cannot out um, your uh, field because Pleiades, you know, you can they can try and bounce your Karn Gorgon with Pleiades, but then you just redirect with Karn Gorgon to their own Pleiades and then kill the beast in battle. Um, and then that basically just loses them the game from there. So there's that. But anyway, for spells, that was uh, 28 monsters, if I remember right. It's either 27 or 28. Uh, for spells, Triple Pendulum Call. Um, I was actually citing one of these out a lot of the time. Um, I could possibly see myself going down to two on this card. Uh, triple Wavering Eyes, I never offered to side this card out. Um, this card is actually really fair in my eyes, and the fact that, like, yes, it's amazing. I'm not going to argue that point. I'm not going to argue that this card isn't degenerate or amazing, but the thing is, if you're playing a player that is not as experienced as you or doesn't know how to play around this card as well as you do, it just benefits you to keep these in. Like, I didn't offer to side this out except for once, and it was to someone that I thought was 100% better than me. Because the people that I played the rest of the time were people that I was like, I felt like they were either the same skill level as me or that I was just better than them. And like they weren't playing around this card. And so if they're not going to play around this card, there's no reason for me to offer to side it out or accept it. Because with this deck, you can play around it with Pendulum Call, Damage Juggler. You can, you can make plays based off you knowing if they have Wavering Eyes or not and play around it like by popping it with Diamond Dire before you set up Scales. There's lots of different like little nuances that reward you for being the better player when these are in the deck. It makes things a lot more complex. And ultimately, yes, you might possibly get blown out by one. But like the chances of that happening are much lesser than the possibility of you just playing better than them in a more complex game state. And that's one of the reasons why I just decided to keep it in in all but one of my rounds. Uh, but I only play two Brilliant Fusion. I only play one Garnet and two of these uh, because I was noticing like that I never wanted to actually resolve this card more than once. And if you drew multiples of them, they kind of clumped. So I just cut it down to two and one and just made the engine a lot more streamlined and simple. Um, these actually, like... It's always great to resolve this card, but I didn't necessarily see it as needed um, nearly as much as it was in the past. Um, but I still haven't I haven't decided what I'm going to do in terms of keeping Brilliant Fusion in or not in the future. Uh, Triple Instant Fusion, this card is like insane. Um, but I was only extracting one Norden because of space constraints, so I could easily see myself cutting this back down to two, which is what I've been playing before. Um, and I actually cited out the Third Instant Fusion a lot because of the fact that I only had one Norden in my extra deck. Um, and like, it was just like... I would look for a card to side out, and like this was just the first blaring thing that like came to me. It's just like I'll just take out an instant fusion and like reduce its chances of it clumping. Um, but then the last, the fortieth card in the main deck is Foolish Burial, um, just to be another card to get to the damage juggler to get to whatever piece you're missing. Usually plush fire, but for the extra deck, uh, for the synchros, I played one Ignister. Um, I cut it at the literal last minute for a Colossal Fighter. And I actually stole a game with this. Now, the reason I played this, um, I stole an entire match with this, actually. Um, it was round three. And my opponent put up an Ignister and a King of the Fairy Lamps and hit me down to 2850. And I, he made me go first game three, and I literally just set a plush fire and passed. And my hand was uh, double Wisdom Eye. Uh, or no, it was Wisdom Eye, Dragon Pulse, Trick Clown, Instant Fusion, and a plush fire. And so I just set the plush fire, passed my turn. He draws, makes Ignister, King of the Fairy Lamps. Ignister spins, um, hit, or pops his luster that he summoned off his own Ignister, spins my plush fire, and he attacks me with both of them. So I'm at 2850 after those attacks. And then he passes turn with two scales up, and he has one card in hand. And I'm like, all right. I just say, if you have max C, you probably got it. My hand's really, like, my hand's, like, not good. My hand's not good enough to win the game at all. Like, if he didn't have max C, I lost. There was no way that I could have won the game. But I play my Dragon Pulse and my Dragon Pit, um, or Dragon Pulse and Wisdom Mine. And he max sees me. And I'm like, awesome. I win now. I pop my dragon, I uh, pop my wisdom uh, eye, put dragon pit in the scale, pendulum, my wisdom eye, and my trick clown. So he draws a card. Overlay for King of the Fairy Limps. He draws another card. King of the Fairy Limps detaches trick clown. And I uh, search for a mask chameleon. So at this point, if he drew Valor, is the only way for him to win. Um, I get mask chameleon to hand. Trick clown comes back. I lose 1,000. So I'm at 1850. 
and then I normal summon the Mask Chameleon and make Colossal Fighter, so he draws a card off that, so he drew four cards off of it, and then I start swinging Colossal Fighter into his Ignister, taking 50 damage each time, and he kept making me recount, uh, because he was just, he was insistent that, like, I was dying before he could deck out, but... 1850 means that I can make him draw 37 cards before I lose, and there's no way there's 37 cards left in his, in his deck when he drew 6, thinned his deck for 1 off Wisdom Eye, thinned his deck for 1 off Ignister, and thinned his deck off for 1 with uh, Mass Chameleon. Uh, like, or with uh, Mass Chameleon being searched off King of the Feralimps. So I was like, no man, you die. And I ended up decking him out while still being at 300 and still the entire match that way. Um, this was just something I decided to play for the event because I saw it coming up more in situations where like, when you are max seed in the mirror, it like forces you into Ignister to like out their board so that like the cards that you give them, you try to make them matter as least as possible by outing their pendulum scale on their board and stuff. But instead, like if they just leave Ignister up, you just summon Claw Fighter and keep ram and just like keep ramming it. Um, like this was an idea that was brought to my attention like by one of my friends literally on the drive down to Orlando. And as soon as I got there, I was like trying to find Claw Fighter, <laughs> and luckily I found someone that had one and uh, got it from him, and I just stole a match with it, and it was great. Uh, other Evelate Synchro is a uh, Cypher Lord Omega. This card is nuts. Um, this card is like one of the is possibly the best generic level eight synchro in the game. I don't need to say any more about that. And then one Nat Beast uh, for the synchros for the fusions. One Seraph Knight and one Norden. As I already said, I only played one Norden because of extra deck issues and mainly due to like Colossal Fighter and Karn Gorgon taking up space. Um, I played the Tall Mias Diamond Pleiades in my extra deck because like I wasn't a fan of this before, but like there's literally nothing else better to make. In most of your neutral game states, uh, but for the rest of the rank fours, um, a trapeze magician, Karn Gorgon, King of the Fairy Limps, Castell, Diamond Dyer, and then Digesto Emerald. Digesto Emerald was my justification for cutting like Nord into one and playing only one Ignister. Um, was like the fact that like this is technically just like an extra copy of every card in your extra deck. And when you really think about it, like if you can make this card and then put stuff back and then be able to make any card in your extra deck again. Like, it's just insane. Like, you can even just put, like, this back and do it again in certain game states, and that's just amazing some of the time. Or a lot of the times, like, your Pleiades actually just ends up getting spun by, like, Ignister and stuff, and, like, that means you just have to put these back, and that's just free and easy, and then you can just make it again and just put your opponent in very strange situations. Um, so, yeah, I really liked Emerald. Um, the biggest card that I wish was in my extra deck, like, game one, um, was probably the second Ignister, but then the next card after that would be Dweller, but I sided Dweller. Um, I might side the Colossal Fighter, because a lot of people, like, a lot of people that I played weren't maining Max C, but they were definitely siding it in, so I could definitely see myself, um, siding Colossal, um, and just playing the Dweller in the main deck instead, but for the side deck, this video is getting a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but oh well. For the side deck, double Dinko Seca, just for backer decks, uh, two of the Sea Turtle Kaiju, just, um, I always put these in when I was going second against the Mirror. Um, just to, like, if they open Nat Beast Pleiades, this was just another out, and I could tribute this over their, um, their Nat Beast, or tribute it over their Pleiades if I had the outs of the Nat Beast in the form of making, like, King of the Feralimps, and then, like, you just kill this. Like, it's the best Kaiju for that situation, because this is the worst Kaiju. Like, you just summon an attack against 22, that's very small, that's so easy to get over. Um, and then a lot of times you just end up Ignister spinning it back to the deck, and, like, it just comes up a lot in, like, lesser game states as well, where, like, they have Ignister boards up, and they max CU. If they max CU and you're able to just like drop this over their Ignister, like it lose, it makes them lose 99% of the pressure that they had over you to keep uh, max, keep going under the max C. Uh, but then uh, double storm because this card's great, and then triple MST just for back row removal nonsense. I don't think I ever actually sided the third MST in. I always put in two for the mirror, um, just to out like Dirge and stuff like that. But other than that, like it just never really happened. Uh, three Magical Spring, this card I'm kind of iffy on. Um, I really liked it like a week ago, but then at this event I just never resolved it. I resolved it like once and it wasn't even good. Like, <laughs> the one time I resolved it I was already winning and like it literally drew two cards that were already in my hand and I just discarded one. I was like, okay, I guess it's just more cards, but I was still already just winning that situation. In that situation. Then the last two cards in side deck are two Imperial Iron Wall for Cosmos and Infernoids. And then the last card in my side deck is the side deck Dweller. Um, now, I was doing something throughout the course of the event that actually was just like great, is that every time I know that I'm going uh, second, i.e. every game, after every game that I've won, um, and I know my opponent's going to choose, uh, no, I know that um, my opponent's going to choose for me to go, or wait, I'm saying this completely wrong, after every game I've lost, and I know I'm going second next game because I'm choosing, I side the Palmaru out of my deck, the Palomaru, and I side the Nat Beast out of my extra deck, and I put the Dweller in instead. And 
that usually you know coincides with me putting in like two or three cards based off if I'm going first or second. And I had two opponents that just played around Xyz Universe because they saw me put in an extra deck card. And when your opponent starts playing around cards that aren't there, that's always to your advantage. Like he had game if he had made Trapeze Magician Castell, but instead he makes um, he makes like Castell and um, a level eight. Like he made Omega, and like it was completely like just not worth at that point in time. Like he could have made Trapeze Castell instead, and he would have just won the game on spot. But I had a set. And he saw me put in an extra deck card, and I haven't had I haven't activated that set all game. It was literally just like a, a brilliant fusion, but he thought I sided in Xyz Universe, so he played around it. But him playing around it actually cost him the match. Like that's something that I actually just really like, and so that's probably why I'll continue to side like the Colossal Fighter, so that I just like always put it in, um, in games that I know they're probably going to be siding Max C against me if they do. So there is that to consider, and that's really just something that's <laughs> really cool. I really liked that. Like, I didn't, like, go into the event expecting that to be the case. But, like, I just kept doing it. And peop I just noticed people were playing around Xyz Universe. And I was like, this card's not even set. This is amazing for me. Every time your opponent plays around a card that you they think you have but you don't have it, it's, always a it's almost always a plus for you um, in the essence of, like, they're making the wrong play. <laughs> so there is that. But anyway, that is all for this video. This deck, pro deck profile was a lot longer than I wanted it to be. But, I mean, hey explanations of things and my weekend were in due order but anyway as always guys thanks for watching like comment subscribe do all that nonsense that you've always done continue doing that in 2016 as you have done it in 2015 but links are in the description to both my facebook pages if you want to connect with me chat with me whatever definitely add me as a friend follow the fan page all that nonsense um if you were friends with me on facebook then you knew that i was posting round by round uh a round by round report of whether i won or lost so if you want to keep in touch with me in that way I do that for basically every event that I enter. Um, so that's something that you can definitely do if you want to just stay a little bit more connected with me. But other than that, click an ad if you have not. I greatly appreciate it. Helps me make money, and there's no reason to lie to you guys about that. If you have an ad block enabled, just do me a quick favor and remove the ad block, refresh the video, click an ad or two, then put the ad block back on when you're done. It helps me out more than you could ever know, and I would be greatly appreciative to you if that's something you could take the time out of your day to do. And it costs you nothing, and it just. Who doesn't like to help people, am I right? But. Other than that, if you have any questions about this deck, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to address them. Things of that nature, yada yada, the same spiel I always say at the end of these videos. But other than that, Happy New Year guys again, once again, and as always guys, take care.